Brian McKenzie with CrossFit Endurance. Hey, we are going to talk about feet and position. Um, one of the biggest problems that we've seen and that I have seen as of recently is a lot of issues with the way people are walking, okay? And we've got a lot of, a lot of the ways that that's solved typically is by wearing an orthotic or a shoe that might create more stability or an orthotic that might create more support. So what we're gonna do is we're here with Kelly Starrett from Mobility Watt. And we are going to uh, kind of go in. We're gonna we're gonna go into position and maybe st and standing and how people should be organized. And then we're gonna go through some maybe some mobility stuff and then talk about so just some easy exercises to start integrating, and fixing these problems. Well, first and foremost is that we gotta give people a, a base template. This is what your foot should look like in neutral. This is what you should stand and cultivate position. Even 300 years ago, Musashi, the Japanese swordsman in the Book of the Five Rings was talking about from the knee to the foot of the foot, you need to create tension. And he's like, make your combat stance your everyday stance. So what we need to people to understand is there's not me just standing around. I'm gonna kick these off real quick. And then, then me exercising, there's me always in a good neutral foot position. So if you take a look at your feet, one of the things that we can do that makes a big difference right off the bat, with no work at all, is you need to stand with your foot in a straight position. If you're standing turned out, then you're gonna to have to work really, really hard to maintain the integrity of what we call that sub-tailor neutral position, this neutral arch foot position. And one of the problems with being in a shoe that's too high in the heel, yeah. where I systematically start to lose dorsiflexion, yeah. or wearing a flip-flop, where I have to either co-contract through the ankle, clinch through the foot, become stiff, is that in order to keep the flip-flop on, is that I'm gonna to have to turn the foot out to walk around that problem. And this is the problem with high heel shoes. No one ever walks straight high heel shoes. They either internally rotate, bam, because that's so sexy, or they walk like ducks, right? So here's the issue, is that we need people to understand that this foot is its most stable when the foot is straight and standing, period. So can you get into this good, stable foot position? Now, at my seminar, we walk around and fix everyone's foot. And we do that by giving people a template. Hey, we brace, we know how to get stable. This is what you're always talking about. We we'll squeeze the butt, set the abs, then I can chill. But then by creating a little torque, by screwing my feet into the ground, my arches will naturally pick up. And the raw problem is, for a long time, we've looked at the arch as a bony structure. It's a sole bony system, right? And oh, you've stretched out the ligaments so the arch collapses. Well, it's not just the bony connections and the ligaments. We have this plantar fascia, we have the transverse arch, the longitudinal arch, and that whole system screws up and becomes tight with movement, with the external rotation. In fact, a lot of the problems that we have in the ankle, this little, this little ligament right here between the outside of your ankle bone, this is the one that always goes when people sprain their ankles. Guess what, when your foot is in this position, that ankle ligament is loose, for example. When your foot is in this position, it tightens up and becomes more stable. So you've got to get people understanding that in cultivating a resting position, I need to be able to screw my feet into the ground and create a stable arch. So this is a collapsed foot. You can see telltale signs of collapsed feet. Toe bunion, you see that people are walking through their toe. The toe deflects. We'll see big, big bone spurs on the back of their feet. You'll see weird, collapsed, mushy, uh, kind of lateral aspects of the heels. And you can see that as I sit here, I'm in a good position. And as I collapse through, now that's a collapsed ankle. Yeah. So one of the things that people are talking about is they're like, hey, I'm having knee pain, ankle pain. And I'm like, look at your standing position. Are you in neutral? Do you even know what a good position is? I mean, it's like literally me saying, hey, my back hurts all the time. My neck hurts all the time. It's so sketchy. Identify a good position. And it's going to take a while to spin up the intrinsics of your feet to cue up that motor control and habit. Now look, if I squeeze my butt as hard as I can sit my abs, and screw my feet into the ground as hard as I can, that's what I'm doing when I'm squatting. But I need to cultivate maybe only 20% torque the rest of the time. So not cobra torque, 20% torque. So just by cultivating this neutral position, and you'll also notice with the foot straight, you tend to be able to load that big toe a little more effectively. You're not so far on your heel. In this position, you tend to load the heel a little bit more because loading the foot is a really strange position. So like so many other things, when we get the athlete to a better position first, a lot of the bad mechanics spontaneously kind of reconcile themselves. So the first thing that people have to understand is can they adopt this neutral foot? And people are like, are you kidding me? I have to stand around and cultivate that? Yes, you do. And look, we see arches really start to develop in kids after years of loading. It takes a long time for the intrinsics. In fact, when we start getting people into this paradigm 
of being able to create torque put themselves in better positions, they often rec uh, report that their feet cramp. It's because they're so weak. And the problem is, man, I love what Romanoff said about, uh, Dr. Romanoff said about the arch. The arch is a non-weight-bearing surface. That is not a debatable construct. A little bit more nuanced position is, hey, if your feet are so destroyed, the bones are flopped on the ground, you've got pain walking, maybe temporarily we need to support that. But what we need people to understand is that this arch is created for a reason. The, the foot is dynamic, and in this position, I can support it. And where we see that it is when we're not supported correctly, that's exactly how what we see. And when I, you know, and I, I just back from being over in London at the Olympics, and I have to tell you that I, it was a, the most broke I have ever seen anybody walk. It was so many people walking around with just collapsed arches. No way to support that system. So the idea of exactly what Kelly's talking about is just what we need to do is start by seeing how long you can just stand there without letting the feet bow out or collapse in. Okay, And these are typical things that we'll see once we start training or exercising or squatting or even running or they, they get exacerbated. So they just get more and more glorified of what's going to happen and where the breakdown is and how we how the system, you know. This is such a big problem that in the NFL, podiatrists, one of our friends, John Wellborn, played in the NFL for nine years, had his feet checked by podiatrists 31 times because when that navicular bone drops on the ground, that's a mnemonic tell that someone's going to tear their ACL. That's how vicious and problem that is. So people come in, they're like, I have knee pain. I'm like, of course you do. Look at yourself. Make this, a better decision. This is, this, is, this is the exact sign of, hey, I have something that's correctable. I can, I can fix something before it turns into a major problem where hip, knee, ankle surgery is going to occur at some point in your lifetime if this is not fixed. One of the reasons pose running and striking underneath my basic support is so important is that it puts my foot into a position where it can become stable again quickly. If I'm way out here, it takes forever for that foot to start to find stability. Forget the heel strike reaction forces, my foot is unstable forever. And because I weigh 100 kilos when I run, if I heel strike, the foot collapses, we start to see that horrible problem. Yeah. The other problem is that if I can't put my foot straight down, then as I translate into extension, then my, my leg will be open. So if I walk like a duck, then the first step I take is look, there's the collapsed foot, collapsed ankle, valgus knee again. So getting people to start to cultivate this position is the first thing, and that's what we, before we apply any mobilizations before we do any exercise. Can you do this? And then can you be aware of this as you're walking? Absolutely. And this is the, this is the first step. So take this, take it away. Take this and let's go walk around your block. 400 meters. Take your shoes off. This isn't, hey, go toss your shoes and go for a run. Okay? Because we're seeing just as many problems with people who decide that it's just like, let's toss the shoes. I've got these broken tendencies and now I'm just going to go run and work them out. And although you may feel a little bit better because you're a little lighter on your feet, you're still not fixing the problem. So, Get into these, this better position, see how long you can maintain it, then actually go for a walk, maybe 400 meters, maybe 800 meters at tops, and walk around the block barefoot, okay? See where that's, and that's the beginning, that's the starting phase of this thing, okay? Set, and to top that off, if you're walking around in a shoe, okay, that is much higher heel, that goes from heel to toe, and it's got a big drop, you want to take it down just a couple a couple of millimeters. Don't be going aggressive where we're, we're, we're just going barefoot all the time or in a low profile shoe. You can take something that's got like, what is this, a five millimeter drop in the, in the Reebok shoe? Four. This, four? So it's a four millimeter drop and typically what we see is people normally in like a nine millimeter drop or more. So taking it to something like this versus a zero differential then working your way down as the foot and the ankle and everything adjusts to this. Think of it this way. You're born to have your heel on the ground flat. And what we that's not debatable. And what we start to see is that we've been systematically shortening that heel cord upwards of a centimeter and a half in some of the shoes. Some of the some of the shock shoes and stuff, a centimeter and a half. It's crazy. That's walking around in a mini high heel shoe, which of course projects all its problems in the world. But what we want people to do is start to be aware of what's going on with their feet. You know, people would talk about, hey, I don't have my summer feet. I'm like, summer feet? You know, our, our kids walk around barefoot all the time as much as they can. So that's that's the goal for starters is can you cultivate this foot position? Can you start doing some barefoot walking? Or even if you know, swing some kettlebells. Just start thinking about let's get your feet a little bit stronger and let's pay attention to what's happening during your movement practice. Watch your feet, watch your friend's feet, watch your partner's feet. 
watch what happens. Watch people in an airport, watch people where they're at, watch these things and keep an eye on them because it's just gonna make you more apparent of the correct position. This collapsed ankle is just as bad as a knee coming in, it's just as bad as the shoulder coming forward, it's just as bad as a rounded back or overextended back. It is a fundamental loss of joint stability and joint positioning. When people are double undering, when people are box jumping, when we see that collapsed foot, that's an error, period. But it's just not on our conscience. This is part one. Expect more.